Yo, it is recording my voice. Hey, look at that. It is. Look at that. <laughs> Always good to check these things. Now we know. <laughs> Hello, you. It's time once again to pour one out with the pouring old man. My name is Russell, and joining me, as always, is the hazy sour, Anthony. How are you, mate? Good now. This is the first time we've done this today, isn't it? It is, I know. Episode five. Yeah, that's a throwback to last week. Yeah, yeah episode five, <laughs> and it's a, a special episode this week. We're it is. A bit it of is. Fun with this to, one. Uh, to commemorate uh, reaching the, the, the half ten of uh, episodes. As an excuse. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's a nice round number. <laughs> we can count those on one hand. So, so what are we doing today, Anthony? We are doing our intro to craft. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about nice, easy to get craft beers so yep. we aren't separating craft and independent we're just focusing on craft beers yeah a lot of people will look down on beers that aren't independent and you know that's that's each to their own but for me and i'm, I'm guessing anthony will be the same here is it it's all about taste for me like i don't really care at the end of the day it's still a lot of time if it's uh, australian made then it's yes. australians making it despite who owns it exactly right and it, it is i do really enjoy supporting the locals absolutely and the smaller guys. absolutely but for a lot of people just branching out into craft beers, it's more about the ease of getting a hold of it yep. and then finding something that they're going to like um, at an affordable price. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, like the, unfortunately, the, the beers that are easy to get hold of, the ones that belong to bigger companies and have a better distribution, that's... Exactly right. So we're going to touch on those. We're also going to touch on some, some of the smaller independents that seem to be in your BWSs, Liquor Land... First choice, Dan Murphy's, um, and are easy to get a hold of. Um, hopefully, it'll give people a good sort of, if they want to step out and actually start trying some craft beers. Yep. But more on that later. First, who are we? We are the pouring old men. Just a couple of old timers sitting on the back porch talking about the beers we love. We aren't brewers. We aren't beer wankers. We just love talking about beer. If you like the podcast, what's that? And drinking it? Yes. 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 Uh, (laughs) If you like the podcast, make sure you hit that big old subscribe button, uh, whatever podcast platform you are listening to. Uh, Give us a review. Give us five stars. Give us whatever. Uh, Just a bit of interaction would help us go a long way. Plus, you can find us on all the usual social media channels such as? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. So it's all, I think, pouring underscore old underscore men. Yep. And you can also find us on YouTube at pouring old men. And with that one, definitely follow, subscribe, and hit the little bell so you get notifications when the new ding, episode ding. comes out. Does that sound like a bell? Ding, yep. ding. So yeah, we're yeah. getting a bit professional at doing these now. <laughs> <laughs> nearly. <laughs> <laughs> we're nearly there. No, no, no. If we're professional, it means we get paid for this. So True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is just out of the goodness of our own Which heart. I can't wait for the day we do get paid because then I can, uh, we can write off our, uh, uh, our drinking habit as a business expense. So. Yes, at the moment, it's just a business loss. <laughs> <laughs> it's an investment. It's not a loss. It's an investment. Exactly right. Yeah, you got to spend money to make money. Ah, uh, Speaking of that, though, Eddie, yes. what have you been drinking? I have been drinking a few this week. So touching on episode four, I did go out and get the Wayward Brewing Raspberry Berliner. Wow, it's amazing how you remember to bring that up today. I know. It was pretty shocking, <laughs> isn't it? So I did enjoy that one. And reflecting back on... Uh, Episode four and mm. talking about the mm. it, was, it was so long ago since we recorded the intro exactly. to episode four. The the ballistic in their hop series mm-hmm. and identifying hops that you like and you don't like. Yep. I had the Revel um, Double Dry Hop Hazy IPA. Mm-hmm. There was a hop in that one. I'm not a fan of. So I am going to have to go through and now identify those um, and work out which one it is so I can... Yep, yep. Otherwise, I did also go back to the Mr. Banks Neon Dreams. I do love that one. That's a really good beer. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, and indeed, Daydreaming in Spring, which was really nice, uh, sort of hazy. Um, it, was, it was good. The Neon Dreams was definitely my favourite. Yep. What about you, Russ? Uh, I had for Hop Nation had the Chop IPA. Yes. Now this is one that uh, I actually picked up from First Choice, and the young man behind the counter was very excited that I, I was buying it. Like he he <laughs> saw me with that, mate. That's a great beer, and you know he was right. That's a really good beer. A lot of people love uh, Jedi Juice or J Juice as it's yes. known, now known. I, I was never really that wowed by it to be honest. It was it's good. Nice it's fine. Like, it, it didn't deserve all the hype. Yes. Um, I think the, the chop is a much better beer. Like okay. we'll, we'll talk a little bit later on 
uh, IPAs that are easy to drink. This will definitely fall into that category. It's just very Excellent. easy. It's 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 not hazy or fruity, but then it's, it's not your big like bitter, danky West Coast IPAs. Yeah, really so well just done. nice hop. Yeah, it goes down absolute true. Excellent. And, and yeah, it's not it's not bad. It's not, choice. it's not badly priced in seven percent. So hey, hey, win win. Yep. Another one I had was the Dark Sour of the Moon. From Young Henry's, me heading back into Sour Land there. Yes, the terrible name, but I was looking forward to uh, that one. I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and you should look forward to it. It's a Ooh. cracking beer. That is really nice. It's uh, blueberry. Is it, is it yeah. blueberry? Yeah, blueberry sourness, tartness to it. And it's. it's Blueberry does really. really yeah, well and this, this is great. And I've got to say, like, it's, it's probably some of my favorite can art as well. The label's just uh, looking like the old uh, vinyl record on the front. It's just very simple black and white, and yes. I, which. Makes the name a little bit better, but yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. So the the other one I had, which was actually a bit of a surprise to me, and uh, like I've, I've probably been on this podcast a couple of times talking how much I love Creature of the Night peanut butter, yes, um, porter stout from um, Ether, Ether Brewing, yes. and I thought that was the gold standard for peanut butter dark beers. It's been overtaken, wow, okay. by Bad Shepherd Brewing peanut butter porter. It is outstanding. Standing, it is, yeah. it is quite something. Like, Where did you find that one? Uh, that, oh, that, that's first choice as well. Like, there you go. Well done, first I choice. know, I know. I picked that one up and there, yeah, that was uh, yeah, an absolute cracker. It's almost uh, like dark chocolatey kind of flavour too. It had the, like, the peanut butter coming through. It's almost, uh, have you ever had like, the old scorched almonds? Remember those? No, I no, do not. I don't, I don't think it's a kiwi thing. It's basically, yeah, it's almonds covered in chocolate. It's got that kind of okay. chocolatey, nutty yes. kind of, oh yeah, moorish kind of taste to it. And yeah, no, that was uh, surprising. So there we are. It's I, I love the fact that we live in a world where we can rank peanut butter stouts. <laughs> yes, that's very true. I mean, and, I can only think of three of them, but <laughs> yeah. But the fact you can get them so easily at first choice as well. Yeah. So that's great that those sort of different stuff is becoming so easily accessible. Yeah, that almost sounds like a segue pity. Oh, it is, isn't it? All right, so first up in the show and tell, we're heading to sour territory, and uh, this will be slightly different. We'll do a bit more of a uh, talk about uh, entry level beers and sour beers. We're going to do first. Anthony has from Ether Brewing. What is it, Anthony? It is written in the stars, which is their soy boysenberry double IPA, eight point eight percent can. So let's have a crack on that one. Crack that one. So this here is up there is probably. Top two favourite sour beers. Um, it's also easy to get, so I actually picked this up at a Star Liquor. And this one comes in at, well, this is 8.8%. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to get your Uber home at this rate, buddy. <laughs> but this one, it's quite tart, so be aware of it, um, not being the sour drinker. Um, but also... In this intro to craft episode, we wanted to touch on some of our other favorite and easy to get sour beers. Mm. So me being the sour level, I thought I'd touch on a couple. So Ether with their written in the stars. But it's got also, a bit of the um that, that face puckering going on. There's just light face puckering on this. Yes. It's not yeah. like uh, our good friend the combat wombat from a couple of weeks ago. No, this um, has got a lot of fruit going on as well, which I enjoy. It's very, it's very lively. You've got to say, there's a lot of carbonation going on there. That's it. And it's very purple as well. It is very much that sort of uh, Robina sort of color to it. But yeah, Ether does the Written in the Stars, which is their sour boysenberry. But they also do their Witching Out, which mm -hmm. is their blackberry sour. I always get those well. two mixed up. So they're both cracking. The difference is the blackberry Witching Out is lower alcohol, whereas the Written in the Stars is their double. IPA, so there's a bit more punch to it. And so if someone's hopping off the mainstream beer train and uh, wanting to uh, dig into some sour beers, is this something that you would recommend to them straight off the bat? Probably ease into it with Witching Hour to start with. The other really good one to jump on to is Brouhaha's Strawberry and Rhubarb Sour. Yeah, that's that is crack. That's probably one of my favourite ones. It's yep. uh, just sour enough, so you know it is still a sour, but mm. yeah. And I, d I don't even like rhubarb, but the rhubarb and strawberry sour is really nice. Yes, exactly. I'm not a big rhubarb fan, but that one... Uh, definitely hits the spot. Um, some other ones that I thought I'd bring up is Pirate Life, their acai and passion fruit sour. Mm -hmm. um, so that seems to be part of their core range. Quite easy to get as well um, in most bottle shops. So that's a good one. Deep Creek also make a couple of really good sours. Guava and passion fruit sours are a really good one if you can find that. Yep. Also comes in a larger can, which that's is true. Uh, 
always a winner. Now, a couple that I have enjoyed, again, I am probably an entry level South person, though I do push that boat out a fair bit. Ben Spoke had one, I think it's still available, it was called Hauser Goosen, yes. which is uh, their tropical gosa. Yep. That's, 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 that's a superb one. It's a nice, light, easy drinky one, not too tart. Yep. One that I fanboy over a lot in the last few weeks, it's probably not available anymore, is uh, Rebels Mango Macadamia Berliner Weiss. Yes. That one's definitely a limited edition one. Yeah, it's probably not available now, which is no. a shame. I'm sure they will bring that back, though. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, and the other one that was really nice is actually from Land and Sea Noosa Beer Company. Yep. Um, they have a mango sour. That is that's amazing. Nice. Oh, that is a really nice little sour. Ma- mango is a quite quite a big flavour. So sometimes yes. it over overpowers any other sort of uh, sour tasting sour beer, or overpowers the IPA. If it's an IPA, but this is well balanced. It's got that nice sort of like uh, that, that tickle of a sour through it, and um, yeah, nice little uh, gentle mango coming through. That's a really good one as well. The other ones to keep an eye out for, and these again are core range and easy to get a hold of, is Hope Estate. So they have their pineapple sour. They've got so, quite a range of different flavoured um, sours. Like they, yeah. They've got the, a couple of mango versions. Uh, there's a Pink raspberry one. Fruit, raspberry, their blackberry sour. They also go good. off the deep end with the Sunny Boy sour, which I know Ooh. you've had. Yep. That right. one, if you want to uh, pucker everything, that's the one to go with. Yep. So yep. That, that's the extreme. If you get into sours, is into these other ones that we've talked about. Pucker it up then. until you're watertight, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Right, so that was the Sours, part two straight away for Australian and Tower. We're heading to IPA territory. Now, this is probably the most populous category of craft beer around there. Yes. Mainly because not just straight IPAs, there's so many different variations of IPA. You've got your West Coast, which are generally quite bitter and they say dank. It's hard to show dank. It's quite that, that, that up. Very hoppy, very yeah, hoppy. Yeah, very hoppy, almost like a resiny kind of yes. like taste to it. And it tends to have that long-lasting aftertaste as well. Yep. So uh, Then you have your New England IPAs or Nipahs or Hazy IPAs. It's all actually the same thing. Um, and that's your more fruity, cloudy, very cloudy at times beer. Like, yes. Um, you think back to the old days of uh, you, if you, you pour beer from the beer tap and if it's cloudy, you have to send it back to the bar at the end of, Not these bad boys. If it's clear, you send it back to the bar at the end of, basically. <laughs> yeah, very true. Uh, plus, there's a whole range of different like, IPAs that are coming up with it all the time. Like there's, yeah. it's um, American IPAs, Australian IPAs, different thing. The key really is just it's an IPA. It's an IPA. Yeah. It, try try them all. See what you like. Basically, that's it. And you will find that there's generally a certain style that that you prefer. Um, I know Ross, you're a big fan of those West Coast and those bigger, stronger, bolder yep. tastes. Um, West, West like- Coast through and through. Uh, it was it was uh two pack was West Coast, wasn't he? So I'm two pack, you must be uh big. Yeah, you're the California. Which is weird, it's really uh, size wise, I'm I'm biggie and uh, you're more two pack, but <laughs> hey. That's it. And then West yeah. Coast baby. Um, uh, I probably lean towards more of the hazies, just with the, a bit more of that fruit. Yeah. fruit I do like it at the moment. There's a few places that come out with what they call no coast beers. So the uh, not not bitter, not hoppy, somewhat just just a blended beer in basically. Between. So somewhere there in between. Go. I've seen a couple of breweries come up that, that tagline now, so that's quite interesting. Nice. If you were delving into IPAs for the first time, you want something that is probably neither yeah. West Coast or Nipa or just, just a general IPA. This one here is Ballistic Beer IPA. Nice this and is nice and simple. It's just an IPA. They blended it just to be extremely drinkable. But the key thing is it's not bland. It's still got the very hoppy taste, there, so you'll, as you'll soon see. Yeah, it's just a very simple, clean, tasty beer. So without yeah, so further ado, crack. Let's give it a crack. We're getting good at making. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to defer to you for a lot of the the IPA tastes, like I like you did with the sours for mm-hmm. me. I did bring a couple that I really like, as far as easy to get ones. Big ones that we've mentioned before is Ben Spokes Cluster Eight, which is a double IPA. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say that is hitting. That's double IPA. If you are you know new to the IPA realm. Probably avoid those to start off with. Like, yeah. it's, it's mainly uh, the double IPAs are getting really up there with um, ABV, like, you know, their yes. alcohol volume. Your general mainstream beers, such as your, you know, your Forexes and your VB, so that's around about the four to four and a half percent. Um, we you talking about these uh, cluster eights and yes. other ones that you're getting, so eight to nine percent beer, yes. which is stronger it, if you, you're more than happy to just sit back and have one. But the, the, the tricky part is 
a lot of them don't taste like it. And that, that's, yeah, that's, very that's, the problem. that's the problem. That's the problem. It's not the fact that they're strong. It's the, it's the fact that they don't taste strong. They go down way too easy. And yeah. and so this is, like I said, Ballistic IPA. This is 5.8%. Um, I'm a big fan of these guys. They do uh, what they call hop forward beer. So there's very hoppy beers. And yeah, this is, although it is... You know, a good approachable beer is very hoppy, very punchy. Um, so, this, so it's a good entry point. Absolutely. To, and it's a good way of finding out whether it is the beer style that you like. Another one I thought that's easy to get is Feral, their Biggie Juice, um, which is another really good IPA. Yep, so IPA. Biggie Juice, yep, let's uh, head into this, uh, your hazy IPA Biggie Juice. All right, let me bring up my ones here. So the other one I was, I was tossing up between the ballistic here, and the other one that's really good approachable one is from Black Ops. That's the Hornet IPA. Yes. Probably a bit more leaning towards the West Coast. You've got a bit more bitterness coming through, but still super drinkable and getting more and more uh, readily available around yes. the place. Uh, and the other IPAs to look for, again, this is not independent, but Little Creatures, they got a Purple Can IPA. That's really yes. good now as well. And... One of the barriers to entry for craft beer is the price as well. And the Little Creatures comes in six-pack. That's about the price of yeah. a four-pack four for most other things. So the, the, the price is right for that one, and, and it's good. Uh, a good West Coast IPA to have a look for, uh, again, starting to get into more and more places, is Mr. Banks's West Coast IPA. Yes. Uh, it's, it's really it's, – it, it is bitter. It's got that uh, West Coast bitterness to it, but not fearsomely so. It's uh, not, nice and smooth and easy to get into. Bolter and their IPA is a, yeah. a simple one. To get one off the of. deep end a little bit, and you can – Get it online and some more specific uh, bottle shops is our good friends at Garage Project. Their Garista, uh, sorry, Garagista IPA, which is uh, one of the early beers, and that is just a fantastic one. It's very probably similar style to the Ballistic one, okay. but very approachable. You can sink a few of them easily. There you uh, go. Without further ado, cheers. Cheers. To the IPA from Ballistic. All right, so Ballistic you can find locally in Brisbane as well. So they've got three locations. Yep, West End, Springfield, and their main base over in Salisbury. Yes. Yes. Um, so they are you... opening up more locations at some point, but yes. So, yeah, so if you get the chance, do go out and see them. It is a great way of learning some more about craft yep. beer. They're also getting more prominence at uh, your mainstream bottle shops, such as uh, First Choice. They have their core range there. Um, they've recently rebranded their cans to this uh, their core range, the swirly design, which I'm not a huge fan of, to be honest. But I like it a little bit better than their original cans. It's mm. just a bit simpler. It, it stands out, but hey, it's, it's what's yeah. on the inside that counts, really, then, oh, at the end of the day. That's what we always say. That's right. Um, um, now, this one, this is a new recipe for them as well. Uh, the old one was the Revelation IPA, and that was a 6.5% IPA. That was really good. Again, you know, big big on the hot flavor there, but yeah, this is, again, probably a lot more drinkable. From an IPA and an entry point, you get that hop, but you don't get that lingering, lasting sort of um, bitterness that you can mm. with some of the some of the IPAs, um, particularly the, the West that. Coast. It's really got that sort of that pineapple mango sort of coming, taste coming through. Like yeah. it's, it's really coming through beautifully. And it's not it's not sweet, so it's got a nice little uh, level of uh, bitterness. Yes, um, it, it's dry, bitter. I was, I was doing some thorough research of this last night, Anthony, and my, I, one of these lined up with a uh, Black Ops uh, Hornet. Um, oh. Just to make sure I was bringing the right beer along for today, you know, it's you have to compare things. I, I'll go the extra distance for this, and yes. yeah, so that, and that's why I chose this one. Just because it's, it's the first quencher, it's it's refreshing, and I could go back and just have a good session on those very, as I say, very sessionable. Yes, that is a key word. These yep. sessionability. Yeah, it's it can also mean sessionability. It can also mean just it just doesn't taste like shit. Well, that's it. But <laughs> this is sessionability for the fact that you can have more than one. That's so, right. Um, some of the other IPAs you can really enjoy, but one's going to be yeah. your limit. Stuff like you look back uh, last, uh, no, two weeks ago when we had the uh, the reanimator from Deep Creek. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably a one and done kind of beer, like very yeah. nice, but one and done. Helios is the Cyclops, mm-hmm. which is a really nice IPA, again, West Coast or American style. Yep. Um, again, I'd probably only have one of those at a time, um, but, but they're both really good. Yeah. And the, the, the key for IPA is finding what you like. Everyone's got different tastes. A lot of people love the hazy IPAs and the juicy uh, IPAs and that sort of stuff, and they'll just drink nothing but juices all day, whereas other people want their bitters. And we'll delve into some uh, some more hazy, hazy ones a bit some, later on. Yes. So. But yeah, no, this is, it's a really good, it's probably harsh to say it, it's a simple beer, but it's a, it's something oh, that's look, done really well, yeah. which is Simple nice. is not bad. Like yes. Simple just means it's clean, it's it's clear of what its ambition is going to be. Yes. It's, it's not, a lot, of, a lot of times people try and get too fancy with beer and it ends up in a bit of a... You get confused, a bit of a taste mix. can be confused. This is a, 
a really good way of sort of introducing yourself to the IPA. Um, again, ballistic are independent, so you are supporting the small guys as mm-hmm. such. So it's a, a great way of doing it. They are it. also becoming more and more prominent outside of Queensland as well. They are part of the, the Founders First group of breweries that's um, ah, nice, that aid yes. the distribution. So I believe they are popping up more and more in like New South Wales, Victoria. Yeah. Um, I mean, the key one that. is, yeah, between First Choice, Dan Murphy's, those sorts of guys, you can get them from there, mm-hmm. which, is, which is key. And then, yeah, your smaller BWS, Lick Lamb, that sort of thing. So, yep, oh, about wraps up. That's uh, very good. The news. Time for the news. Yes. Oh, right. Uh, first up on the news this year, Pity, are you looking forward to the Gabs Festival this year? I would have been. Yes. Sad news, Gabs fans. Gabs has been cancelled for 2020. I mean, we probably kind of saw this one coming. Yeah, pretty much so. Surprised um, they didn't try it in sort of Queensland or WA. Well, I think Victoria's the main market for it. That's the that's the base. That's the money spinner. Exactly. That, that's yeah. the main one for it. So that's I guess they couldn't really do it there. Um, a lot of breweries probably don't have the time or the extra finances to dedicate resources True. into making a special beer as well. And staff as well. I know yeah, exactly. Been a lot of it's, back, it's tough so, times. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm gutted because I, I was really looking forward to going this year. I, I was an idiot last year and didn't go. Yeah. Oh, this a, year we could have sold it as a business expense. <laughs> <laughs> but last year was the first time they had it in Brisbane, and so I was very really excited. Then I forgot all about it and didn't go. Uh, and then I was looking forward to this year, and then you know the you know, the, the Rona the Rona happened. Yes. And so that got postponed. It was penciled in very light pencil strokes for November, but not anymore. They've it's gone. It out. So yeah. that is a dang shame. Uh, next up on the news. What have you got, Pity? I had absolutely nothing to nope. give you, sorry. <laughs> well, they say no news is good news, except yeah. for when you're reading the news. Let, let's go with no news All this right. week. Well, just as well, I've got more news then. Uh, Source Brewing has opened up a new venue up in Cairns, of all places. That's their awesome. first Queensland venue. Also up there, you know, you've got Hemingway Brewery up there in Cairns. There's, a, I think, another one. I can't remember Don't what know, it is. but Cairns is such a beautiful spot. Yep. And obviously, as Queenslanders, Get out, support your yeah. locals. I've, I've got a little line for this one because obviously Kansas is the spiritual home for Great Northern. It was actually made down in New South Wales or Thank Victoria. You. So if you want a beer from up here, you've got to go to the source. Oh, oh well played. Hey, you see hey, what I did there? We've copyrighted that source. Exactly. Yep. You need it. Trademark. Yeah. Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so it's good to see the brews like this like, popping up in places outside the main census. That's like, it. And uh, North Queensland, a uh, nice, fresh, cold beer. It's a perfect weather oh, for it's us. It's a hell of a place to drink a, drink a cold beer, honestly, let's yeah. be honest. All right, next up, a couple of birthdays. Uh, first of all, happy birthday to Feral Brewing, celebrating, would you believe it, 18th birthday. 18th, so it can drink, can drink its own it, beers It can now. drink, it tastes its own beers now, so good on them. They're releasing a, I think, a double IPA version of their Hot Bog or Feral or something like that, I can't remember. Ah, special way to celebrate. So happy birthday to them. They're, they're one of the sort of, I suppose, like the OG gangsters of uh, the craft beer world in Australia. Yeah. Like they, they're solid, them, consistent. You can find them pretty much anywhere. Yeah, their hop hog kind of set the world alight for a while. It was yeah. the number one Gabs there a few years back. There you go. Um, Biggie they, and or Biggie Juice and Dirty Biggie, Biggie Juice has come through lately, and they keep sort of reiterating on the Biggie Juice. They've got the one of the, the Dirty Biggie Juice, which yeah. is the oak version, and the Imperial Biggie Juice. Uh, they are owned by Coca-Cola, so they're not actually independent anymore. But, we but they're craft. They, they're, they're craft. Uh, they're, 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 they're craft. They're, it's a difference, yes. Well, see, with them, I kind of understand. Oh, they, they're from WA, so it's hard to distribute stuff if you're in WA to the rest of Australia. So you oh. kind of need a bit of a leg up from someone. Let's so. be honest, throw enough money at anyone and we're going to sell out. Yeah. So. As long as the quality of beer doesn't dip, then hey, yes. why not? Birthday number two. By the time this goes live, all the birthday will be over for this one and all the beers will be sold. But yes. Happy birthday to White Lies Brewing over in, I forget what suburb is. I don't know. You're looking at me we're, like, Western I suburbs of Brisbane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. Let's say it's it's over the, of Brisbane. Yeah, yeah, it's over like the Oxley Way over there somewhere. I forget what the other suburb is. But yeah, quite a small brewery on the uh, Brisbane scene. They have some cracking beers. They, 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 they punch some flavour into their beers. They're most yeah. famous for... Um, they've got Hazy Craze, Hazy IPA, which is um, a really nice beer. 
my, my favorite one of theirs is um, it's the oh nut brown. It's a nut, wow. nut brown American dark, dark ale or something like that. And it's like a basically a chocolate brownie in bear form. It's really nice. Oh, can't go wrong with that. Yep. To celebrate their birthday, so their fourth birthday, of course, four years old, they're releasing five beers. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. of course. At the time of recording this, they have announced four of them. So they got lemon lime cheesecake sour, which sounds awesome. Yep. You, you can take the uh, dessert beer mantle from me temporarily for that yep. one. Um, Hazy Craze Senior, which is an 8% Imperial version of their Hazy Craze. Throwing the Senior in there, it's sort of teeing us up as well. Exactly. Maple Espresso Russian Imperial Stout. That, I'm all over that one. That's just calling your name, yep. Yep. And then they've got Fire Strata, Twisted Fire Strata, Hazy X- XBA. That is awesome. Yep. I'm not going to sing it to you, but on their Facebook release for that one, there's a whole... Set of lyrics do, to go yeah. along with the Fire Starter song. Yes. I'm not going to do a disservice no, to any and myself. We'd love to add it in there, but uh, we're not paying those. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And last one. This is a serious point, actually. So, yes. my wonderful wife is shaving off her hair, much to my dismay. It's all in the name of cancer research. Uh, she recently lost a very good friend, uh, quite rapidly in the end, unfortunately, to cancer. Uh, and to pay tribute to him, she is raising funds for cancer research. The shave off is taking place at Easy Time Brewing in Wollongabba. I think it's on November eighteenth. Oh, we check will on that day. That on the there. socials. But if anyone likes to donate, she's raising money for it. She's having to raise about five thousand dollars at least for it. Uh, she's well on the way to that already. So go to shave.acrf.com.au. You can go on there and search for Naomi Scott Lum, and, and uh, we will put that on our Facebook. We'll put it on a Facebook link as well. Yes. Uh, it's a great cause. Um, she's always been a big Shania, uh, Sinead O'Connor fan, so she'll get to look like um, Sinead O'Connor for a few weeks. Or is it Ripley from Aliens? Yeah. She's running She's running the gauntlet. She knows I'm going to be calling her everything from Moby to Uncle Fester and Sinead <laughs> O'Connor for a few weeks there, but she's willing to put up with me for a yeah. few weeks. But the good thing is she can go have a beer and watch... Adam's family? Ahead. No? Oh. Uncle Fester, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, let's not go anywhere. So no, it's it's fine. Like she, it's, we're at the point she doesn't listen to podcasts anymore. She knows what we're doing. She doesn't listen, so <laughs> I, I, I can get away with this one. So a typical wife, she doesn't listen to anything you say. Hopefully, there's no wives listening in on this. Oh. One. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case she listens to this one, I'm going to refrain from answering that. Uh, so I think that's all we have for the news. All right, so time now for Show and Tell Part 3, and we are focusing this time on hazy IPAs. We're drinking hazy, and we're talking about everything else that's light. Yes. So we'll start off on the hazies, and we'll talk about what's a good place to start. Again, I have gone with the Bolter Hazy. So nice and simple. It was a toss-up for me between the Bolter and the Black Ops Goat. Yep. I uh, stuck with the Bolter simply because we've talked about the Black Ops a fair few times. So I thought this would be a good good change up. Yeah. And again, this is a nice, uh, I suppose, middle of the road hazy IPA. Like it's it's not one of these dodgy hazies that are not hazy at all, but it's not yes. one of the, the super juicy, looks like someone poured half a cup of milk in a kind of exactly <laughs> looking right. sort of so, beer. It's, just, it's a not, nice, approachable, easy to drink, and just. Yeah. It's fruity, it's yeah. juicy, it's still got that IPA sort of hoppiness to it as well. So yeah. it's a good good midway point. Because yeah. you will hear a lot of craft wankers saying this is a bad hazy because it's not juicy, but listen to your taste buds. Exactly right. And we'll actually touch on a couple of the juicy ones yeah. as well. So but this one is a good solid, what is it, 1.8 standards. Uh, it doesn't actually list us uh, 6%. So, again, a good solid drinking beer. Yeah. Um, it's refreshing. Yes, they're no longer independent, but it's still craft. Yep. And, again, it's, it's, it's a really tasty beverage. It's nice and fruity. It's super drinkable. It's got really strong pineapple notes on those on this one, actually. Yeah. Um, it, it's really refreshing, really good summer beer. Yeah. They have in the past released a the double uh, hazy, which is, they call the daisy, yes. and that, that's a really good one uh, to get into if you're going to the double IPA territory. Yes, if you have a chance. Like Bolter do some amazing beers. Like Speaking of the other light beers, like the lager is a good solid beer as well. The, the, the one drawback I have of Bolter at the moment since they've been taken over is that they've lacked a bit of creativity with their releases. Yes. Um, they've gone about and re-released the Hazy. They've re-released um, the, nit- uh, the Handsome Elvis, the uh, Nitro one. They haven't really brought much new to the table since. No. They did a team up with Garage Project at the start of the year, um, yeah. the, the Dry Haze, and that was sensational, by the yes. way. 
Um, but yeah, they they kind of they're not not branching out into the the big bold stuff. It's no. now just sticking to the standard easy to drink sort of cool range mm-hmm. stuff and just tweaking those. I don't mind it because all the cool range is fantastic. Yeah. What what they do is really good beer and yes. really simple beer as well. Yep. Um, you're, you're, you're not going to get some abstract flavors. They're not going to do a you know a coconut and watermelon flavored yeah. beer. They're just going to give you beer that tastes like the style of beer it is, yep. and just do it really clean and simply. Yes, they hop or malt first. That's that's sort of their seems to be their motto. Yep. Um, which is good. I I like it, and they are a great place if you're down on sort of on the Gold Coast to pop in and. Now, for hazy IPAs, yes, the, the bolts are hazy is now part of the cold range, so that's uh, more available. But in general, hazy IPAs are a lot more accessible retail-wise these days. Go back probably, what, about two years ago, and you, you did have to go to your specialist bottle, bottle shops yes. to uh, get you know good range of hazies. Because it's, it's relatively new. It's a, it's a very new, very trendy. When you look at it, three, of the, three I think, of the best hazies are Bolter Hazy, Black Ops Goat, yep. and Ballistic Bear Hawaiian Haze. They all seem to be core range, easily accessible at pretty much all I, your bottles. I had shops. a sneaky schooner of the Hawaiian Haze from Ballistic and last night, and that was, yeah, that, yeah. That was lovely. Uh, that's about to go into wide distribution as well, so look out for that one at your local bottle shops. The can art's good because it's basically just a Hawaiian, uh, bloke with a Hawaiian shirt. Yep, the level of fruit in the, the Ballistic Hawaiian Haze is probably a step up from this one. Yes. Uh, it's definitely more uh, your tropical fruit juice flavors coming through. I think if you were to do a range, the Black Ops is probably more hop driven. Yep. Uh, Bolter is sort of in the middle, and then the Ballistic is probably more fruit driven. So they're they're your three steps. So it'd be a good good one to grab. Yep. One of each of those. Sit down, have all three, and just see where you are in the mark. The other interesting thing with the hazy IPAs is it's not just the tropical fruits you get. I think the Corumbin Valley Brewing. It's, they're not that well available but they do they, they call it breakfast juice they got in trouble advertising wise for calling the beer breakfast juice yep can't imagine why the um, valley is yeah great they, their juice and yeah. fruit drink. so that, that it was definitely a juicy hazy ipa but it was more uh your bitter citrus kind of actual taste like <laughs> oddly enough it probably did taste like a breakfast juice yes a bit of citrus coming through so there are different taste varieties of the hazy as well garage project do some great hazies not as easily accessible. Deep Creek do some fantastic hazies, yep. um, and they're consistently at first choice. Yeah. So, now if you want a hazy that's just going to blow your socks off, the level of fruit they've jammed in there. Yep. Uh, from Big Shed Brewing, I think it is. It's the boozy fruit. Ah, uh, yes. Not in wide release. I, I did pick one up from Star Liquor uh, yes. in a couple of locations, and that is. Really, really yeah. intense high on the fruit sort of thing. That's um, pushing the boundaries there, but another super is, tasty. Uh, Ether, their deep space haze. Another Ooh, I haven't good, had that one. Yep. Um, probably very similar to the the Bolter, where it's it's still sort of that midway point where it's got juicy, bitter, hop. It's sort of a good good middle range of everything, which is really good. Yep. Um, otherwise. I know you now, did. if I'm not mistaken, the the deep space haze from Ether is that not a, a hazy pale ale? Would it... I do believe so. Which so... is a good segue into talking about pale ale, no, isn't right. it? <laughs> hey, hey. Um, yeah. So if you're hopping off the old uh, mainstream beer train and heading to craft territory, your first stop should probably be the old pale oh, ales. Yes, it's it's the less threatening of the craft beers. It's uh, most easily accessible taste wise, and it's not too much of a departure from some of the lagers and stuff like that yeah. that people may have been having. The, the most popular, to use my train analogy again, the most popular station along this track is probably the old James Squire 150 Lashes. That's it, It's a simple, good sort of first stop. Yes. It um, is. Cra- craft lovers will uh, look down on James Squire 150 Lashes. And, you know, I don't drink anymore. There's, there's much better beers around. Yes. But it's, it's converted more people into crafties than any other beer in Australia, exactly hands right. down. Like, and I think that was probably one of the very first ones I ever had was exactly. it's, on that, that journey. It is what it is. It's a starting point, and if you like that sort of thing, you can keep going down it. You go past it, and you move on to better things. Yes. Black Ops, their Pale Ale is another great one to mm-hmm. sort of move into. Revel, do some nice ones as well. Tell you what's a good one is, and again, this is more widely distributed yep. these days, is your mate's Larry Pale Ale. Uh, that, yes. is, that is a... It's starting to pop really, up. Really, yeah, it's yeah. really fruity, really uh, thirst-quenching, tasty beverage. They're from the Sunshine Coast, so it's um, well-designed to be a, a beach beer, that one. 
perfect. Yeah. Yep. Really, you got to have you got to have stuff that can be drunk in summer in warm weather. Yep. There's nothing better than coming in after mowing the lawn and smashing yep. back a beer. Um, a couple of good fruity, fruitier sort of pale ales. Probably more Brisbane centric, admittedly. Yep. Uh, sea Legs have a really nice tropical pale ale. Yeah, they do. And Slipstream Brewing, the Laguna oh, Tropical yes. Pale. That, that's that's a cracker as well. Yep. Um, that one's hard to get at places. Yes. Um, but then I would probably re- recommend go to the brewery, check it out. A hundred percent. Yeah. Make make an effort to go in and see those guys. They're, they do some really good stuff. They yep. have good core range, but they do like to to experiment as well. So. Yeah. And the other side of the uh, the tropical pale ales, then you have got your XPAs. Yes. Now these are. Uh, there's no real definition of what XBA is. It's popularized by Bolter. They use yes. XBA. It's, it's extra, extra hoppy kind of um, lighter in color. Is more, it lighter? kind of more of a sort of a more sort of a straw. It, a bit more of a darker color. I thought a lot of them do. It, it changes from brewery to brewery. Yeah. So, so I always see them that they're almost between pale ale and the mm. hazy, sort of that that lighter color. Verging on having a little bit of cloud to it, yeah. just just not as cloudy as hazy. Yeah. So, but the the Bolter XBA is superb. It's, yeah. There's a reason why it was the number one on the yep. Gabs for a few years until they sold out to CB. Yep. Um, another one that actually I think they're from New South Wales Filter. They do an exceptional XBA. They yeah, so it's brilliant. Again, another Brisbane centric one that. Um, I've only discovered the last couple of weeks is the Citra Hopped XPA from All and Brewing. Yeah. That's and oh, that's only five percent. So if you want a really nice, sessionable, full flavor XPA, go the Citra Hop from um, yeah, from All and that. And you want to support something independent? Yep, that's absolutely. A great yep. Um, the, 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 they're a smaller operation, but yeah, yeah, they they are around the place as well. Yeah, oh, there's some good ones. Um, I do have to give another shout out to yes. a, a ballistic beer with that. I can't. Not mentioned listed oat XPA. That is good. That that is different to your standard yeah. XPA. I, I would re- recommend for most of these craft beers. I, I'm guilty. I'm a can drinker. I'm too lazy to pour a can into a glass yep. at the best of times. You know, sometimes I just want to crack a can drink it in there. But something like the uh, ballistic oat XPA, just do yourself a favor, pour into a nice beer drinking glass, and then you get the the, the aromas and appreciation. And you start drinking that one, you got these notes of like vanilla coming through. You got that oakiness coming through, and it's it's a beautiful beer, it really is. I wanted to mention a couple of other sort of light beers. Mm-hmm. Indulge uh, me. Revel, their summer ale. Yep. Uh, also, Black Hops, their lager. Uh, James Squire and their Hop Thief. Again, not tenant, but they are a craft beer. Yep. They do do that. Regularly. I did mention the other way there. The, the Hop Thief 10 got interesting um, hop beer on it, so including favourite Sabra. Sabra, yeah. So it's a good one when it does come out to jump on that one, grab grab one, have a try. It's, a, again, a good way to sort of branch out. Uh, Young Henry's, their New Towner and their Lager, mm-hmm. um, good solid beers in those places where you go to the pub, they may not actually have anything beyond a Great Northern Forex, <laughs> that sort of thing. If you do see one of these ones, do just grab one. It's a good sort of entry point and at least something other than sort of the, the stock standard beers. Yeah. All right, so time now to have a look at new bears coming out. There are only a few that we've caught that's caught our eye this week. Uh, Pity, what you got for us? Yes, so I had a couple from Deeds. Firstly, their Hummingbird, which is a hazy pastry double IPA. Yes. Uh, definitely intrigued by that one. Deeds do some great beers. Uh, this one I'm probably, I saw and thought of, thought of yourself, which mm-hmm. was the Deeds and Step Brewers collab beer, which is out of step, yep. Which is a West Coast IPA, very so nice. Probably a bit, bit more dank in that mm-hmm. one. Uh, Range Brewing, as usual, have come out with something. So this week it is Jam, yep. which is a cherry and blood plum sour. Mm-hmm. Can't say I've had a blood plum before, so I'm intrigued by what. I think I've had a blood pl- be. plum before. Oh, I've had a couple know. of types of plums. I don't know if I'd call them bloody or anything, but. Yeah, let's just go with it. Uh, and the final one that I wanted to mention was All In Brewing. So they've been doing some cracking little beers. They've got a beer out called the Bearded Dragon, which is an Australian pale ale. Yeah, that's another version of the pale ale. So it's yeah. pretty well since it's any, a new Australian pale ale version it's, coming out. So. They tend to be quite malty, so it's yep. a, a good one to, to sit back and enjoy. So yep. do keep an eye out for that one. Yeah, uh, The other one that Rangers bring out this week is also is the Yo-Yo Enthusiast, which is, I think it's a... 
think it's a hazy, I think. Um, okay. It's, it's a re-release of an old beer. Um, yeah, people went nuts for it for, uh, the last time I saw it come out, so uh, that'll be a good one to get into. Um, I've got a couple. So Soapbox Brewing. Again, can carry on my ongoing theme of dessert beers. This is Pow Wow Carrot Cake IPA. Um, I love me some carrot cake. I don't know whether I want it in my beer or not. So. Yeah, I don't know. It, carrot cake is always – it's sort of that savoury sweet where mm. – Probably my favourite cake, to be honest. I'm not a big chocolate cake person. I love me carrot cake. So, yeah, it's a sweet brown ale baked to perfection and dressed up with all the flavours of your local cafe classic. Now you can have your cake and drink it too. Wow. You know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's nice. And it's got to be better than the last brown ale that we had on the show. Oh, so. to you, Bickies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the other one, uh, Backers Brewing, uh, one of their 10,000 brews they have on tap at the moment, probably. Uh, they've got a tropical stout. Oh, uh, and go. they've just got that on nitro in the brewery. I'm not sure there's nitro mm. when they uh, bottle it. Uh, it's a tropical stout infused with a touch of spice Cuban rum. Uh, medium, light in body, and but rich and smooth. Again, we mentioned last week they are doing a fundraising drive. The uh, back us at back us to uh, launch their canning range. So, yes. I, they're one if you do get a chance and you're over on sort of the eastern side of Brisbane, yep. go check them out. They do some amazing beers, so they're definitely one to grab a beer flight. Or I was going to say gra- grab grab a flight of beers and I'll just yeah, yeah just experiment Enjoy. with some of those. Yep, absolutely. We move on once again to show and tell four. part four, uncharted territory. Now. Yeah, we haven't gone this far before. We head into the dark lands of dark bear territory, um, and I have got originally shaken up by pity. Thank you, pity, for shaking up my beer there, pal. Uh, from Bruhaha, <laughs> their milk stout. Which I thought was the nitro milk stout. Yes, so. in fairness, he thought it was nitro, so shaking up, but uh, all he's doing is really was sl- getting prepared. No. Yep. Now we've just uh, stirred it around a little bit, so <laughs> it's all right. The lactose now fills the can okay. rather than just being. So Bruhaha from up in Mullaney, uh, up in north uh, north of Brisbane, they actually, I, I did them a disservice before when we talked about IPAs. Their IPA, uh, just a plain IPA, that's yeah. another cracking starting one as well, Bru- Bruhaha IPA. Brilliant Their beer. Nipa is amazing as well. It's probably yeah. the best Nipa I've ever had yeah. as well. They kind, of, they kind of get lost in the... Uh, the, the, the conversation of breweries yes. around Brisbane and around yeah. Queensland, they kind of don't stand out uh, yes. as much as they should because their the beers are exceptional. And they, I love their can. They can out just plain white with different colour lettering for big, bold, brew hard lettering. I love it. Yep. So we've got enough time for this to settle in. I've a pity shook it up. <laughs> uh, all right, let's give this a crack. Wasn't the best crack, that one. Kind of one of those three stage cracks, I think. That's all right. What? You can blame the, the shaking of the can. Uh, so dark beers, this is uh, my time to shine. I, I love my dark beers. I love uh, uh, the roasty dark chocolate flavours that come with it and just the, the earthiness that comes up from uh, from the flavours. It's just... Which is quite funny because I've actually bought a decent list of dark beers to yeah. jump onto. Now, traditionally, I like to drink my dark beers in winter. Like, as soon as yes. uh, it starts getting cold, I start uh, getting on the... Uh, um, start buying up some dark beers. Often enough, I always start off with Tui's Old. I, I think Tui's Old is actually a really nice dark ale. Um, there you go. I'll, I'll grab a six pack, start off, and then from there, I normally grab, yeah, this will be on the list of picking them up. And increasingly at the moment, the last couple of years, there's more and more uh, experimental with different versions of, uh, of the stouts. So a lot of people doing Russian Imperial stouts are just big, strong, heavy stouts. But yes, they're, they're as, the big booze kickers. As far as a entry point, I. I probably wouldn't go then straight away. Like stouts have really got to ease yourself into them. Um, yes. find something smooth. So that's exactly why I've gone for the Bruja milk stout. The milk stouts with the lactose tend to be a little bit creamier and nicer. Yeah, they, they kind of lose the um that burnt um, yes. that burnt chocolate sort it's of taste. Not as to it, yeah. lingering on the palate as as the other ones. It's a lot so smoother. This one for Bruja has four point eight percent. So again, nice. Yeah, it's not, not too strong yeah. as well, which is good. Being the non-stout drinker, I'm going to give my list and then let you let you shine. Yep, yep. So uh, my list, the Bolter Handsome Elvis, the Nitro Stout. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I don't like about that one is the fact that they went to the 375 mil Yeah, cans. that was a bit of a disappointment there. Um, that is an amazing one. And Nitro, shake the can. Yep, you uh, can shake the cans of Nitros. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and surge for those ones. Yep. I do like the nitros just because 
they tend to be a bit creamier again. Uh, another good nitro is the Sea Legs Nitro Milk Stout. Yes. Other than that, big fan of White Rabbit's Dark Ale. Yes, that is uh, that's very good. a really good one. Midnight Jackal from All In Brewing, really good black IPA. Yep. Uh, really ether brewing and they're black as your heart. The Great Drop, and Young Henry's Motorcycle. Yes. That's, that's yeah. a superb There's a one. few of my list there, admittedly. For me, if, if, if you're just starting out on the Dark Bears, the, yes. the best place, and I'll say this without um, <laughs> without being embarrassed about it, the best place to start the Dark Bears is James Squire, actually. James Squire Porter is oh, yes. probably still yep. just one of the – it's a very simple Porter, very simple Dark Bear, but very tasty and it's great. Uh, it's probably the beer that got me onto the Dark Bears anyway, especially – Here's a hot tip. If you want a, a taste a taste sensation, give yourself some, a nice moist piece of chocolate cake. And have the chocolate cake and eat that down while sipping away at a dark beer and there's a bit of food matching for you. It uh, goes down a treat. Well, uh, for me, the dark ale introduction was the, the Dunkels, the German dark beers. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. they're always a good one to start with as well. Yep. Um, and as, as Pity said, the Young Henry's Motorcycle was a very nice one as well. Yeah, the Henson uh, Elvis Nitro. I tell you what, it's one of the best and probably more approachable stouts I've had this year was from Little Bang. Again, in Brisbane, not so readily available. Down Victoria probably is maybe. Um, so Little Bang Foreign Extra Stout is a really cracking one. One of the best uh, dark bears I've had for a long, long time. And again, likewise, Garage Project Arrow Noir, which is their dark ale water style bear. That's really nice also. But yeah, and past that, if you really want to turn things up and not see, so when you look at your sort of imper- imperial stouts and your Russian imperial stouts, and they come with uh, a real dark bitterness to it. That's where you, know, you go back to episode one for us, where we looked at the Dainton Dark Lord, and yes. there was a super intense. That had dark- a lot going on. It had a lot going on. Me, I rouse it. I love it. Other people, maybe not so much. A good midway point one, actually, uh, between the entry level and going as far as the Dainton is the Pirate Life Stout. Uh, I think it still comes from one of the the big old 440 mil cans as well. They do a really good uh, stout um, that is, you know, it's it's a bit more of the burnt sort of flavor to it, and it's heading into uh, that that, that real dark territory. But, yeah, that's really nice. What I I forgot to mention... um... Little Creatures, is it the Return of... Return of the Dread. Return of the Dread. That yes. is this. Return of the Dread is probably... It's one of my favourite beers of all time. It's yes. just, um, again, it's heading down like uh, very dark, very bitter and very threatening. It's, uh, I always remember we at the, the pub I was working at, on, um, working at at the time, we put it on tap. I remember cracking the first keg and seeing like this uh, no, Vegemite-like substance going through the <laughs> all the bear lines and what have we done? And there's, this, <laughs> there's a big black menacing bear and it's just it's it's very intense, very full on, but oh my Funnily goodness. Funnily enough, it wasn't for someone again who doesn't mm. jump on stouts. Yep. Um, it didn't have that long lingering no. taste, so it was a big punch in the face to yep. start with. But it didn't linger, so it was actually a, a nice, yeah. easy drinking. And they are like they own by line, yes, not independent. So yep. but in the end of the day, still little, little creatures Make really good dark beers. Yeah. And Return of the Dread is one of them. Sometimes they bring Return of the Dread back on limited release. Um, this year they brought out a coconut banger, which I quite liked. Uh, previous years they had one called Fuggle Was Real. Return- was- yeah, the Fuggle Was yeah, Real. Yeah, the Fuggle Was Real, which is uh, using Fuggle Hops. Which was actually quite yeah, nice. Yeah, and that was really yeah. nice as well. So, uh, yeah, I would say the key for chasing dark beer is don't stop at one. If you Try, if you try something and you don't like it, just try something else because yes. there's a lot of variation in between the, the most simple ones. And I, I would say have have the range of a black IPA, have a porter, have a stout, have a milk stout, have a nitro stout. They seem to be each of the individual steps. Yeah. If you're really enjoying it, that's when you broaden your horizons yeah. and go into your... Experience. You will notice I, I left off any mention of black IPAs and there's a reason for that. I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 they're not they're not stouty or porter enough for me, and the kind of weird midway point between an IPA and a stout, and I I just don't rate them. <laughs> Whereas, see, I quite like some of them. Um, I haven't found one that I liked though. Uh, definitely try out the Midnight Jackal and the Ether Black as your heart. They're they're two good black IPAs. They're probably bordering on. Tell you what, if, if, porters. If you want to turn things up a notch. Have yes. a look out for Ballistic Mexican Hot Chocolate. 
Now that is interesting. Yes, th- this is probably a one and done kind of beer every night. But yeah. um, if you live, especially if you live somewhere cold, this is a nice warming beer because they they pack this thing with like habaneros as well. So it's got a bit of cinnamon. It's chocolatey cinnamon. Yeah. Um, and it's got a spicy warmth and it tickles your back of your throat. And it's 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 a it's a it's a real adventure. It's probably pushing thing pushing the barons a, a bit. Dayton Ashley did a really good one. Matchsticks. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a chocolate chili one yep. as well. Um, it actually probably had more chili than what the ballistic one did. So ballistic sort of you get it and then you go, oh yeah, there's a little bit of chili in there. It just sort of just suddenly hits you just that little little sort of hint. The Dayton one, you sort of had and went, ooh, that definitely has chili in it. So, uh, and sort of the more you drunk, the more you went, oh, there's chili. But then, sort of almost halfway through the can, you went, ooh, I think I actually like this one. So it was a, it was a weird, weird sensation. Glad like you said, had a crack. Absolutely. And like I said, really good on a cold night when it's a mm. bit chilly in the air. Oh, great yeah. stuff. And, and that's the fun thing about branching <clears> out into these beers. You, you might ever only have one of them, but sort of go look back and go, oh, I'm glad I tried that. When it comes to craft beer, like people coming into craft beer, uh, it can be an, an intimidating environment to come into because oh, there's really? so many, there's so many different things and you don't know where to look. So and the, the cost is the cost is there, be. but if you're walking into this, as if you're picking up the pamphlets of, uh, so you decide to drink craft beer. Yes. Step one, step one for me for anyone would be find your local brewery, your lo- local craft yes. brewery. Talk to the people behind the bar, and they will give you a sample. They will give you a tasting flight yeah. if you like, and just, just and just try it. Like and there's nothing the wrong thing, with yeah. trying the new things. Jump on the the tasting flights because you can get something where you get a sour, you get an IPA, you get a lager or a pale ale, and then you get a dark beer. That's that's sort of your each individual stage of beers. Yep, the, that's the, the great thing. The about people, it. At, so especially like, especially the ones that are. The home bases for the brewery. So, yes. um, you know, I, I love Ballistic Springfield, but if you want the proper experience, go to Ballistic Salisbury. Yes. And the guys here know the beers intimately and they're really passionate about it. Black Ops are great. Black Ops are great. Yeah, they always talk there. Uh, Slipstream, Revel. Because um, you'll find the, the more you get into craft beer and the more you uh, look at the uh, community, the one thing people love doing is talking about craft beer. It's why we're doing what we're doing right here because we love talking about it. Yes. I've gone into so many random conversations with people at bottle shops just talking about what we like, have you tried this, blah, blah, blah. Yes. And, and, and it's without, again, we keep referring to, there are beer wankers around the beer snobs that you know think they're, what they like is best. It doesn't yeah. matter what you like. No, because it, it it's an individual thing. So if if someone tells you, oh, that's a rubbish beer, and you're sitting there going, that's like the best beer I've ever had, there's a phrase. I'm not going to use it because <laughs> we haven't worked out the beat button, but... Basically, tell them to shove it. That's right. I'll Google. I'll know how to, yeah. work. I'll know how to work it out. Because <laughs> really, it, it's about what you enjoy. So yeah. sit back, enjoy them, enjoy, enjoy the journey, enjoy tasting yeah. each individual one. So my, my, you know, if we're giving advice, mine would be follow your taste, get to know what you like. Taste is all that matters. Yes. Never settle. The joy of craft is a thrill of finding something new and something amazing. Exactly right. Um a great recommendation I gave to a bloke who's just just joining the craft beer journey. Yep. Who actually tuned into our, one of our early podcasts. Oh, good on him. Yeah, so I'll give him a shout out. Did, did, he, did he hit subscribe and follow us? No. But did he, he give will, us five stars? He will now. He better. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I just said write down the ones that you like, um, particularly when they mention the hops and stuff like that that are on the can. Jot those down. Yeah. Um, keep a record of the ones that you like. Keep mm-hmm. a record of the breweries that you like and just enjoy it. Yeah. The, other, the other good thing to do as well, educate yourself. Like learn yes. these new things. Um, one, one of the more interesting things I had, uh, I think it was Bridge Road from down there in Victoria. Yep. Uh, they released a four pack of beers. Each beer was made exactly the same way, except they changed the hops on each one. So that was, that was a great exploration of, yeah. you know, knowing what, different hops can do in different beers. And so that's where I first discovered the, the Vic Secret hops. Oh. Uh, there's a really nice uh, Australian uh, grown hop. I yep. quite like that one. There's a couple of other, I can't remember what the other ones were. They were fine. There's not yeah. too much difference between them, if I'm, if I'm honest. Uh, but the Vic, Vic Secret one definitely stood out. And I'm going to sound like a really boring old man here. The other thing is... That's us. Drink responsibly. 
<laughs> well, it's yeah. you, you don't you don't have to. This, this is a bold concept, I know, uh, but you yep. don't you don't have to drink to write yourself off. Drink yes. to enjoy the beer. There's nothing better than just sitting back having maybe two craft beers. Yeah, um, having one sort of before, like, during. Dinner. If you're gonna write yourself off and get drunk, no worries. Drink shit piss. <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> save some money. Absolutely, yeah. yeah drink something cheap. Like just, just don't drive. <laughs> just don't drive. Yes. Don't drive. Um, and be home by 10, okay? <laughs> 10 o'clock, be home by. <laughs> I'm asleep by then, so I don't know. <laughs> so that's all we have time for on this week's episode of Poor and Old Man. We have run out of room yes. for Wazza. Sorry, ladies. I know he's a uh, lady's favourite. Yes, but we will find him next week, wherever he is. Oh, we know where he is. He's on the floor of a brewery around Brisbane somewhere. But <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. He's out there sampling. And- he calls it research. <laughs> My <Yeah>. ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yes, remember to like, share, review, and subscribe to the Poor and Old Men on all of our socials. Give us uh, your, your backing and your liking and your following. Yeah, it keeps us going. Absolutely. Uh, and, again, if you want to donate to My Wife's Head Chain Fund, We'll put the link on the podcast uh, website, the Facebook, Facebook page. Yeah, that thing. The socials. We, we, we tasted four beers today, mate. It's, it's, it's affecting my uh, speech. <laughs> Let's run with that. Yeah. Anyway. Can you remember who you are? I've been Anthony. <laughs> and I've been Russell. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll catch you next time on The Poor and Old Men. Yeah.